this evening we're going to catch the last of the long days of, uh, of summer. Welcome to the Layover Live. One life for the revolution. Well, here you go folks, so voiced over because uh, it was a bit windy and here's the Piper Cub. So I own a share in this aeroplane with 10 other people, or 9 other people actually, there's 10 of us in total. The aeroplane itself is nearly 80 years old, it was built in the Second World War. Uh, it arrived in Sicily in 1944. And the reason it's got such a peculiar paint job is after the war it ended up would you believe it, flying from Courcheval in the French Alps. It's Oscar, uh, he's my son, he's also a pretty experienced glider pilot. But the idea of the flight was to first of all test some cameras out, particularly this 360 camera which is cool, uh, and secondly to get Oscar into a little bit of powered flying. So don't take any, any of what we're doing on this flight as, as instruction. But um, So a couple of bits about the Cub. Look, it has no electrics. It, it, originally it has no electrics at least, as does. Um, but it, what it doesn't have is an electrical starter. And what you can see is doing there is hand starting the engine. When you first start out swinging propellers it's a little bit scary but eventually it becomes hugely satisfying hugely satisfying when you get it right the first blade as Oscar was holding his holding his finger up there so up there you can see me turning some radios on so although this airplane is nearly 80 years old it's got these uh, modern um, an accoutrement so it's got a, a radio it's got a transponder it's got ADS-B out you can just about see at the back there on the back window it's, there's a sucker which has got the ADS-B uh, sky echo device which is really cool all of that is linked into my iPad and I'm just gonna follow through on a thing then there's some low-tech things like this wooden prong which is for dropping the door down lives up in a little hole. So over the years the aeroplane's been uh, modified, it's got a slightly enhanced engine over the original original engine. So that's an O200, Continental O200 in place of the original A65. The engines are kind of related, um, but it's more frequently seen in things like a Cessna 150. But it just means it's easier to get parts, has a little bit more power as well. So Oscar's kind of learning to, to taxi here. I'm going to bring him in in a minute. I'm going to ask him some questions and I think he's already decided that this whole thing's pretty cringe. But um, uh, the thing with all tail draggers really, but in particular um, reasonably steep tail draggers like the Cub is you can't really see an awful lot. So you've got to plan your taxiing out. Uh, and getting used to getting used to that is, uh, is, a, is a skill worth learning. The original objective here was to was to have a nice evening flight in the setting sun. Uh, we've been wondering about the weather all day and keeping an eye on the on the weather conditions. And then eventually, uh, when we got up to the airport, it was it was generally a lot breezier and a lot grayer than we were originally planning. So it wasn't the uh, the last sort of gentle evening flight that we that we planned. I was just che checking the. Uh, Magnetos uh, and doing the run up, so he's checking the carburetor heat. 
normal command position, so the normal place for the pilot on, on the early model cubs, as this one is, is the rear seat. Um, so Oscar's in the passenger seat there in the front. However, the way this thing was set up in the Second World War, it was an artillery spotter. The back seat faced backwards, there was a big radio set in it, uh, and the pilot sat in the front. The idea was they flew round over um, over shipping or over whichever positions they were they needed to uh, draw fire to. This is Oscar's first powered takeoff. He's just he's sitting next to me right now, shaking his head. This, this is White Wolf, and it's famous for its bumps. That's quite entertaining. So, what we learned after this? What did we learn after this, Oscar? Mm. I'm not very good at a takeoff. Well, that day, not completely convinced. It was my first one, but I, basically, I think I needed to pick a point on the horizon and stick to it. Um, which I didn't realise at the time, so you saw a little bit of wobbling on the yaw. Yeah, I think you're being a bit hard on yourself. Take off number one. Critical. Get, getting used to the rudder and a little bit of getting used to the pitch attitude that needs set, needs to be set. So the Cub was originally designed in 19, I think it was 37, not by Piper. So it was designed by um, a gentleman called Taylor, um, and Piper saw the benefit of the Cub. Uh, as, a, as an aeroplane that could teach America to fly. And along came the Second World War and there was a civilian pilot training program that led to effectively explosive growth in building uh, in building Cubs. And it's estimated that over 80% of all the pilots trained in the US in the Second World War learned on a Cub. So you're in good company there, Oscar. And it's a great aeroplane to fly. It does everything you need it to do. It's not fast, it's very noisy, it's a bit drafty. What do, you, what do you think of it compared to the gliders you've been flying? <clears throat> it's definitely more noisy than the, the gliders. You've got the um, high-tech aircon when you land, which is opening the door. Or if it's a hot day, you open the door anyway. Um, it's a little bit scary, to be honest, because I'm used to flying with a parachute, and this thing basically flies like a glider with an engine. So it feels a bit wrong. It feels a bit wrong? Not wrong. It feels a bit different. Different, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, and I'll show you this on the map. We'll, um, we're using the brilliant Sky Demon. And we can have a look in the logs and just sort of move around, explore the flight in Sky Demon. But the idea was to get a little bit of, a little bit of handling practice. Um, just to get the feel for for turning and so on. And one of the things you can definitely see um, from the map is how tiny the radius of turn is. It's just, in, you know, if you needed to draw in artillery to a particular spot, you could definitely turn over that. I have no idea how, how those pilots were brave enough to go fly over a artillery position lots of angry enemy looking at you so it won't come as much as a surprise if you've done a lot of gliding then really there isn't much to learn in terms of handling the aeroplane um, apart from using too much rudder sometimes too much rudder, it was the opposite of a lot of students that I've flown with of course mm. um, yeah it needs a bit of rudder but it needs but pressure a little bit of pressure. So you can just about see White Wolf and that's the runway we're going to land on. We're going to land more or less opposite the direction uh, that we're flying in now. Uh, I know people are going to say we didn't land on the centre line. We tend not to land in the centre line of Waltham because it's bumpier, especially with those white lines. So this is that's an overhead join at Waltham. 
as this is it from another view. Um, the idea is to come over the top of the airfield and do all our turns in the same direction of the circuit um, and uh, and then join join up with all the other aeroplanes. So this first landing was me demonstrating to Oscar a little bit of side slip and speed control. spot what I did wrong. Yeah, so the, the honesty and one of the, one of the reasons the Cub's such a brilliant trainer is it's uh, it, it really kind of um, it really shows how if you've not got the speed quite right and I was probably two or three knots fast didn't quite hold the aeroplane off enough gives you that little skip um, and tells you all about it also pretty unforgiving on the on the wall for bumps. Oscar setting up for his his first landing. And what ended up happening was uh, speed ended up getting a little bit high, and we were running out of daylight a little bit. It looks lighter than I re recall, actually. Mm -hmm. Do you think that? Yeah. We're starting to get a little bit. We're starting to lose the light a little bit. We decided to call it quits. We had to be home for dinner anyway, and a slightly better landing here. But the learning point really back was way back on downwind and onto base leg so as we start turning towards the airfield. Um, probably not quite enough. Not quite enough trim, not quite enough attention to holding the pitch attitude, um, which left us a little bit out of trim on uh, on finals and a bit a bit quick. Overall, though, good little learning flight. Half an hour of um, highly distilled learning. Cold, bit chilly. Mm. Those of you used to flying regular light airplanes, no mixture control on the Cub, so you just turn the mags off. That stops the engine. No need for the wooden prong when we're opening the door. What do you reckon? You coming back for another go? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe? <laughs> Come well. Got that on camera. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be very bitey. Doesn't want to. There you go. Well done. 